What's cracking, guys? Omar Esop here, here with a very special guest. We got Eric Helms in Toronto for a special. Don't leave me hanging oh, here, bro. Sorry, yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, I gotta do the. It's a flex. Well, oh, we oh, we got it. It's amazing to have you. Before I go on, I just want to say you're one of the few people in the industry I do highly respect and look up to you from your years of work, the time you put in, the integrity that you have, the amount of usable, actionable information you've given away for free, and just what you've done for the community. Here today, guys, this is going to be probably a little bit of a longer video. I think there's a really interesting discussion that you first started on your Instagram that was all about natural inspirations. And when we, when we say natural inspirations, we're talking about individuals that were around before steroids were even invented. Unequivocally, these individuals are natural. And what we'll tend to notice, you know, I've taken a look at a few of them, like Eugene Sandow, the, uh, a lot of you guys might know about him. And you think to yourself, all right, like the, he's an outlier. Like there's only one of him and he's a genetic anomaly. Like he looks phenomenal. But the amount of people you've been posting has been insane. And maybe that's a good conversation talking about fat free mass index. So maybe Eric, I, my first question for those that might not be familiar before we dive into this, what is fat free mass index? Right. So everyone's familiar with BMI, body mass yeah. index. Uh, and if you're familiar with it, you probably understand that it's just the relationship of how much you weigh to your height. Yeah. So we would classify someone as having, you know, being with obesity if they're at a certain point. And that's a useful tool in, in medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise, in um, the sports literature, there's become the topic of what's called fat-free mass index, which is the same exact equation, just using your total lean body mass rather than your total body weight. Yeah. Uh, and there was a... I would say a useful study that wasn't interpreted very well, right. either by the authors, in my opinion, or by those who've read it, uh, where they used a small sample size of just people in a gym who'd been lifting for two years in LA. And based on that sample, they said, hey, you know, the highest we saw was a 25 fat free mass index uh, among the, the non steroid users, therefore, that's the natural limit. Yeah. And then, ironically, in the same document, uh, they list the estimated fat free mass indexes based on just a visual assessment of like magazine covers from the 40s and 50s of right. what we of what they thought the Mr. America's winner's body fat was. They estimated the body fat percentages and therefore the fat free mass index of the pre-steroid era um, uh, Mr. America's, uh, which was from 1939 to 1959. Yep. And you could argue that you know in the mid 50s to late 50s. There's probably some steroid use going on, whether it was all of them or some of them. It's still pretty damn rare yep. in its infancy. But definitely in like the 40s, pre-1950, and if you really want to get crazy and get all conspiracy theory about how they could have got access to it. I love making conspiracy theory. Yeah, right? and somehow had more chemistry knowledge than the chemists who actually made the first, you know, uh, artificial synthetic steroids. <laughs> right. Um, then maybe you could look at like 1944, okay. 1945 and yeah. earlier. It's definitely natty. But even among those guys, there was a good number who had a, over a 25 fat free mass. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so they exceed. So first, there's a study that says, yeah, 25, like that's what's possible naturally. It's like, well, wait a second. It's like, there are people we have documented. And if we even are- In the same say, study. Yeah. So like 25 is the max. By the way, here's some guys who are natural who are higher than 25. Yeah. Conclusion, can't get higher than 25. Yeah, impossible. Yeah. And, and so you said a lot of people have misinterpreted that and have said, you know what, like, that's the absolute limit, 25. And so they yep. use that to try and analyze. You know, there's 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 that there's the war on uh, uh, carbs. There's the war, as you said, on Christmas. Yep. Right. And now there's the war on the natties. Absolutely. Right. Well, they're not really natties. We're not, we're not warring on natties. War we're on the saying, fake natties. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I guess it's gotten better with the fat free mass index thing because previously it was just, let me see a picture. Oh my God, that's impressive. Yeah. Uh, that's not possible. Right. You know, um, which I think is an understandable reaction. And it is true there are fake natties out there. But now at least you're like, that's crazy. What's his height and weight? Yeah. Okay. He's only 5'9", 160 like, like most natural bodybuilders. Okay. Okay. He's, he, he's cool. He, he's cool. He just, he's just veiny. I guess that's yeah. it. Veiny's possible these days? Yeah, so it's possible, yeah. So steroids don't just create to have veins? Having a vascular system is considered natural. Okay, okay, oh, yeah. that's cool. So, yeah. so you know, now now that's changed a little bit, <clears throat> but at the same time, there, there just aren't like hard line limits in physiology. There are limits for individuals. Yeah. But when you look at the broad population and just the way physiology works, it's gonna be a spectrum yeah. of all the crazy genetics that are out there. Yeah. You know, like when you think about it, you look at two dog breeds, right? Yeah. And obviously they've been bred. But you look at two different animals that you think there's not the same species. They're both fucking dogs. Yeah. You know, so there's a similar genetic diversity among people. And well, the reason why I've been choosing to to post natural inspiration is these guys in the pre-story errors. One, it's cool. It's just nice to get in touch yeah, with the, the history, history, right? Uh, but two, there's no debate. 
It's yeah. not about like, oh, whatever, it's traps or blah, 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 or what feds did he compete in? It's just like, look, if you picked up a dictionary, testosterone wasn't even in it yet. Yeah. It did not exist, it's impossible. Yeah. You know, whatever he did, it wasn't Royce, you know? And that's crazy, uh, Eric, because we're gonna post a whole bunch of examples, and you'll give some right now, where you say, oh, like 25 is the limit. It's like, there are tons of examples. Like yes. you're, I thought, like, all right, Eric posts like one, two, 10, what, 15? I'm like, you just keep posting them, and you have, so many, these are people from the pre-steroid era that if we take a look at A, their feats of strength, like what was that guy's name, Herman? Herman Gorner. Yeah. yeah he was incredible. You know, he, he uh, was a, a lifter who competed and also was like a strongman performer. Yeah. Uh, and in like the pre-1920s, 1910 era, uh, he deadlifted 793 pounds. Right. At, at what was recorded as a body, of two, body weight of 220. Yeah. It could have been as high as 260, but we think at the time he did that, he was 220 pounds. And even at 260 pounds, it's crazy. Yeah, 793 Delif is insane. Yeah, most people would think no matter how heavy you get, you can't pull that. Yeah, you naturally. Know, as you get heavier and heavier, it's actually harder to deadlift. That's yeah. why you see like an IPF. Ray Williams thing. and all those guys. Yeah, yeah. They, they're not pulling more than the guys in the 105s or 93s even sometimes. Yeah. Like if you look at like Mr. Deadlift himself, yeah. you know. So uh, it, it's incredible, you know, and there, there's a bunch of other examples. Like uh, one guy who I think we're gonna show the picture. His name is John Lem, the Swiss Mountaineer. Yeah. He was a wrestler in the early 1900s. And he was 5'8", and this, this is a legit thing. It wasn't like a circus performance. He had to weigh in for a wrestling competition. Yeah. He was 216. Yeah, 5'8". Yeah, you take a look at the picture. Right? You estimate his body fat percentage. I thought he was 12, like being trying to be conservative, but you said if we're being the most conservative. Right, maybe. like maybe he's got some intramuscular fat, maybe the belt is covering his belly. Yeah. Maybe he's got really lean quads, but his hamstrings and butt are carrying it. Yeah, so, like somehow, like yeah, unlikely, but let's say 15%. Yeah. And maybe he's 15%. Yeah. Even at 15%, at 5'8", 216 pounds, it's like a 28.3 fat-free mass index. Yeah. And this guy's absolutely natural, like before steroids were even invented, so yeah. We have to assume time travel is real for him not to have been. Bro, if he yeah. Which is possible. We, you know, I don't like know. a good conspiracy know. theory. Yeah, yeah. But, and that's why I think you show, uh, once again, through all these lifters, the very notion that 23, uh, 25, sorry, is the absolute limit is just not only untrue, but it, it could be detrimental. And some people might say to you then, Eric, well, wait a second, bro. Like, okay, whatever. So 25 is not the actual limit, but you're looking at the elite of the elite. Yeah. So what does that even mean in a practical sense for anyone watching this video? So two things. The first is, is it really the elite of the elite? Yeah. So this was a time when there was one fifth of the world's population and lifting was so unique yeah. that it was a circus act. Mm -hmm. You couldn't go across the street to the gym. There weren't gyms. Yeah. People didn't lift. So if you think about the proportion of one-fifth of the people that there are today who are actually lifting weights and for these genetic anomalies to, to have surfaced, yeah. it's probably a little deeper than we thought. Yeah. And now where there's you know two gyms within a two-block area in most cities and we have five times as many people and we have, you know, it's not the Great Depression, we can actually afford food, well, that's uh, uh, something you mentioned on the side that's interesting. Training and nutrition is so much more optimal now. A lot of these individuals, we see what I first noticed when you showed me photos. I'm like, yeah, their uh, pec development, they didn't have a bench press. They didn't have any of the tools that we have now, and which is why you'll see like their delts look great, legs and all that stuff. Pecs look good, yeah. but if they had even just the equipment that we have now, think how much better they would look. Yeah, like back then, you wouldn't say, hey, what do you bench, bro? You hey, what do you press? Yeah. And there was people pressing more than like like sometimes approaching two times body weight that's in military press yeah. which is insane yeah. you know so it, it was a different era and uh, but it's really useful to look back at that and just see the the, the, the depth of the human genetic possibilities and yeah. it's true like it's not really useful to try to look at anyone and go well I want to be like them but I need to know if they're natural so it's possible for me yeah you have to have a deeper more intrinsic reason to be lifting than just trying to achieve something impressive I think you did a great video on this recently, like, why do you lift? Yeah. Um, and, and that's a question that is much more important than where can I get? Because if I can't get there, I should just use roids or give up. Yeah. And, and why even set that arbitrary number for yourself? Well, you don't know your own potential, right? Absolutely. It's like you're, for a lot of people out there, it's like you're starting your lifting journey. Maybe you've been lifting for a few years. It's yeah. like, well, are you doing everything optimally first off? And it's like, two, it's like, you're just a few years in. It's like, for most Absolutely. people, it's like you've been training for what, like 15 years, you said? 15 years, yeah. Yeah, people tend to think it's like, it's just gonna happen like that. And mm -hmm. so maybe some people are just, I don't wanna say afraid of putting in the hard work and dedication, but if you don't know what your potential is, and if you know, uh, we take a look at that theoretical limit and we see that it's not even true, not to say that you're gonna be the genetic elite, it's like why put a limit on yourself from the get-go, a handicap? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's basically a way of giving up agency. Yeah. You know, like backstage when I was a bodybuilder, I used to see guys get off stage 
and you'd be like, oh, this judge has screwed me, I placed 10th. Yeah. And that makes you feel good right now. Yeah. But what you don't realize is that if there's only external reasons why you're placing poorly, yeah. then what do you change? Nothing, better give up. Yeah, it was all the judge's fault, nothing to do with me. And it's it's, it's the same thing, and I, I've been guilty of it too. You know, I've definitely been frustrated with my progress at times, or you know, questioning if it's worth it. And that's part of the process of making it a lifestyle. Yeah. So I understand it's a stage, like I don't fault anyone for that. But if you don't grow out of that, you're not gonna be long for the iron game. Yeah. And you're gonna miss out on all the, the emotional and physical growth you could get. So what you're trying to tell me if I, I'm looking at the summary of the video is to train hard, uh, stay dedicated, stay focused, and you'll make progress. Maybe, and maybe also find a deeper meaning for why you're doing it. That is insane, to look no, for, you know? I can't do that, bro. Well, instead, I'm just gonna call everyone out. And not to say, uh, uh, to flip it full circle. There are fake natties. Yeah, and uh, some of the initial uh, thing where it's like, uh, uh, to try and expose some people if you have evidence, that's a good thing. But to go on this uh, an unnecessary witch hunt, then could just turn into something that's uh, more harmful than helpful. Yeah, ask when does it matter? If someone's trying to sell you something and you know they've achieved it, by other means than what they're selling, that's, that's fraud. Yeah. But if someone is just saying, hey, I love lifting, come check me out, and I don't really wanna share with you my status because it's not even legal in this country and it's a personal choice, yeah. why even worry about it? Yeah. Like they're not putting themselves up as you can be me, be me, buy my shit, you know? Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it gets really convoluted, which is why I think the uh, thing that you said, and we'll link it in the description, you have that article you're telling me about on 3DMJ where you talk about uh, yourself, how you take personal responsibility then for what's in your power to right. change, yeah. rather than, again, putting that limit or thinking, well, I can't do that. It's like, you don't know. It's like, I remember, uh, I first thought to myself uh, years ago before the lifting standards increased and before I knew about powerlifting, when I, I was just casually lifting at the gym, I thought like a 500 pound deadlift was like it, like was mm -hmm. the max. Like That's me lifting, you know, six years ago, I didn't know anyone really strong. I knew some people lifted 400 pounds, 430, yeah. 440, but anyone lifting 500 pounds, that has to be the limit. You know, yeah. I, and it's an artificial limit I had in my head. Yeah, and it's, they're not useful constructs. You know, no. like people have thought about, you know, Jesse Owens who ran like a, a low 10. Mm. But he did that on like an unmodern track without spikes. Yeah. There have been some sports scientists who predicted run a sub 10. Yeah. Back in 1936. Yeah. As an African American yeah. from America who had no opportunities to train any kind of effective. Yeah, yeah. It's not like it's like we got the whole team behind you on no. this one. It's like everyone hates you. Yeah, you're lucky you got to, to actually run. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, so I, I think that's just a real positive way to look at it. And I think your series, which everyone should check out on Instagram, really highlights this. And it serves as an inspiration, right? Yeah, and if you just love history, it's, it's not like I'm using the secret propaganda campaign to be like, hey, we're all actually natural. Yeah. It's just interesting information as well. Yeah, you know, 100%. But uh, Eric, I'll say thanks for being on the channel. It is amazing having you in Toronto. I look forward to doing all sorts of collabs. Maybe uh, some people can leave a comment in the comment section below what they want to see because you're here for a week. That project, uh, hashtag get shredded, is in the works. That will be revealed soon. Thank you so much for everyone for watching the video, making it all the way to the end of the video. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video. Make sure also to check out Eric. All his social media will be linked in the description. That's all the time we have. Now we have to go out and murder Allie. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess we'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace. Peace.